This video looks at that practical where you investigated the effect of indole acetic acid, that auxin, on plant tissue. IAA, known as indole acetic acid, belongs to those group of plant chemicals known as growth regulators. It belongs to a group of growth regulators known as the auxins, and auxins are growth promoters. IAA is largely produced in the meristematic tissue at the tips of plants, so the apical meristems. It's also produced in the meristematic tissue found at root tips. And it's also produced in developing seeds. So IAA and auxins cause cell elongation and we studied auxins in detail when we looked at phototropism. It's important to note that auxins can also stimulate the production of other growth hormones too. Auxins will have very different effects on different parts of the plant. It all depends on the concentration of the auxin and where it's acting upon. For example, the roots of plants are very sensitive to IAA, so very low concentrations of IAA will have dramatic effects. The plant shoots well they're not as sensitive as the roots and so higher concentrations of IAA is needed for cell elongation here. So let's go through the practical now. We gathered eight petri dishes and into the base of each of these dishes we placed some grid acetate. Grid acetate will help you measure by how much the roots and shoots have grown. You'll just simply be able to count the boxes. In our practical, we used radish seeds. And into each of the eight prepared petri dishes, we placed five radish seeds per dish along the center line. All good experiments need your results to be replicated and that was the reason why we used five seeds per dish. They served as the replicates. The IAA stock solution is the most important part of the practical. It's a stock solution because you know its exact concentration. It's 10 to the 2 parts per million. The stock solution was made up by your teacher. Eight identical bottles were gathered and labelled as shown. In the first bottle, 10 ml of the stock solution was placed and into the seven other bottles, 9 ml of distilled water. And then we began our serial dilution procedure. As we carry out the procedure moving from left to right, each bottle becomes one-tenth more dilute than the previous. To begin with, we took one mil out of the first bottle, which was the stock solution, and placed it into the second bottle. After mixing and using a new pipette, we took one mil out of the second bottle and put it into bottle number three. And again, after mixing, we took one mil out of bottle number three and using a new pipette, we placed it into bottle number four. And after mixing, we transferred one mil out of four using a new pipette into bottle number five. Then one mil out of five into six. One mil out of six into seven using a new pipette every time. And finally, one mil out of seven, however, it goes in the sink and not into bottle number eight. This was really important because bottle number eight is your control. It should contain no IAA. Each of the bottles now contain nine mils of liquid and the last bottle, bottle number eight, should only contain nine mils of distilled water. This is the control. Each bottle was matched with a Petri dish into the petri dish was placed a piece of filter paper which was only slightly dampened with some of the bottle contents. On top of the filter paper was placed cotton wool and the remainder of the bottle contents was placed onto the cotton wool, soaking it. Wetting the filter paper made sure that the seeds stayed in place and soaking the cotton wool ensured that each of the seeds in each of the plates was in contact with the solution for the duration of the experiment. This procedure was carried out for each of the eight dishes and then they were wrapped with parafilm. The dishes were all stacked on their sides and incubated at 25 degrees Celsius for two to three days. Stacking the dishes on their sides means that the shoots will grow up and the roots will grow down and this is just easy for measuring. After three days, you measured the shoot growth and the root growth of each of the five seeds in each of the dishes and you got the average for the shoots and average for the roots. Each of the seven dishes with IAA are going to be compared to the control with no IAA. 
So tagging each Petri dish, you measured the shoot growth for each of the five seeds and you got the average, and then you measured the root growth for each of the five seeds and you got the average. Then you calculated the percentage root and shoot stimulation. Don't forget that you're comparing percentage stimulation and percentage inhibition in the shoots and in the roots as compared against the control. When you plot your results, you hopefully get a graph similar to this. You can see that at very low IAA concentrations, there was a great deal of root growth stimulation in comparison to the control. So IAA seems to have an effect on roots. At very low concentrations, it makes them grow more than the control. The opposite seems to be true for the shoots. At higher concentrations, there was a greater deal of percentage shoot stimulation as compared with the control. So at higher concentrations of IAA, the shoots appear to grow more or to be stimulated more than the control. It should be noted that very high IAA concentration inhibits growth of shoots and of roots. Did you know that synthetic or man-made auxins are actually used as weed killers? These would be the weed killers that you spray on your lawn. They're very effective on dicots such as dandelions, but they don't appear to harm your monocots, the grass. Another synthetic auxin is naphtal acetic acid. It's used in rooting powder and it basically stimulates the formation of roots from plant cuttings. Some commercial fruit growers would actually spray their apples and their pears with auxins. This prevents them dropping off the trees too early and results in larger fruits. Not an auxin, ethene is a growth regulator which is commercially used to ripen fruit. Section B on your paper is all to do with the practicals. Make sure you've gone over lots of Section B questions. The very best of luck, the only way to revise the practicals is to do the past paper Section B.